All right, we are recording. So I just wanted to do just a quick Zoom, hopefully. You guys might have questions, which is totally fine. We'll get to them all at the end. Um, but especially now with corporate changing a bunch of stuff, I just wanted to give you guys kind of like general do's and don'ts with posting and putting things on your story, um, what things are allowed and what things aren't. Um, and I was going to, there was something else. Oh, and then I wanted to just do kind of like a brief recap of revamping your Instagram and Facebook. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the do's and don'ts first, and then we'll go into, um, revamping your Insta and your Facebook. But let's start with, let me pull this up. Um, <laughs> what are you not used to being in this thing you scratched your face okay sorry I had to reply to that okay so I'm going to show you a little bit, and this is on the team page too. So if you guys ever want to tell your newbies about this, you can either send them this training video. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel, or, um, you can just search this in the team page or ask me and I'll tag you in it to tag your newbies. Um, but this was actually created a while ago and it's just about different do's and don'ts. And honestly, I'm just going to kind of go over the post. Um, and that's going to be kind of the general topic just because I think it's good to have like discussions about it and talk about things. Um, so I'm just going to talk about, first of all, that we are in an attraction marketing company. So everything that you post, whether on your story or on your page should be visually appealing or aesthetically on point. And like, I'm going to show you different examples of what that looks like and what it should look like and what it shouldn't look like here in a second. Um, but it says, you may notice that some, um, oh, bummer. you may notice that you're getting less likes and less activity on certain posts and it's probably because it's too spammy or one of two things is happening. Either it's too spammy or you're not getting enough activity, so it's not bumping your post, so only like 10 people see it. I mean, literally, you guys, 10% of your followers see your post. That's why that posted chat is so important. So if you're not in that, then reach out to me or your upline if you want to get more activity on your posts. Um, but first, we're going to go over algorithms. So social media platforms work differently now by being able to engage the audience better. They want you to be able to draw people to your news feed so that you have greater satisfaction and they continue to use your service. Social media platforms now filter out the noise automatically. Everyone's news feed looks different based on the stuff you like and your interests. Yes, it is that smart to know. As a result, on average, only 10 to 18% of your friends see each of your posts. So how can we change our algorithm is by posting quality and attention grabbing posts. There are many network marketing companies out there and we need to set ourselves apart. We are here to share about these amazing products and opportunity not to spam our friends. So don't, um, sorry, I keep getting text messages and it's distracting me. Don't post photos where 80% of the picture is words. It, okay, here's, and I'll kind of bounce off of that. So if you're managing your Instagram to where you have like a quote every fourth picture or like something like that, it's not a problem. Um, and those are cute. Those are fine. But if you're posting like pictures and I'll show you kind of quote pictures that are okay and ones that maybe aren't so great. Okay. Something like this where it's like super simple or like this. I don't know if you can see that. I hate that it does that there. Um, those are fine, but it's ones where it's like, let me find the bad one. Um, 
And so one's like this. And this isn't even that bad because it's still white and black, but a lot of ones like this that have like a bunch of color or that are just like, too busy um, is just, it's, it's too busy. So if you do some more simple ones like this, then it's easier to read. It stands out. Um, so those, those types of ones are fine. It's like the super busy kind of cheesy looking, looks like your four year old would post it type of thing. Steer clear of that. Um, do post photos of you using the products. People are drawn to faces, your face. They're interested to see if the products are something that they can trust and something that you trust enough to be buying. Run your auto ship every month and become a product of the product. Then you simply share your testimony and your personal feelings about the products. It's really hard to talk every single day about products that you've never used or that you don't truly believe in. So when you start using the products and you have your own result pictures and you can attest to what they're doing for you personally and for your customers and your family, that speaks volume to, oh, here's this person's picture that I found on Pinterest. I mean, not that you would say that, but point being, it's more genuine, right? And people can feel your excitement and your confidence um, when you know what you're talking about. And a lot of that comes with just using it. Um, don't borrow people's posts word for word. So it's fine to copy and paste a post to your notes that somebody else did, but you're going to be editing it almost, you know, 50% of it with different emojis, inserting things about you, taking pieces out, adding pieces in, um, just make it more, more genuine and sound like you but it's okay to use other people's posts as inspiration. Um, it's especially important to do this when you have a lot of mutual friends. So a lot of us that know each other, we have a lot of mutual friends. So people shouldn't be seeing the same posts over and over and over again. Um, your pictures should be high quality, bright photos. They should not be blurry, overly busy, or too dark. So if you guys are posting pictures that aren't of the best quality, either we need to think about getting like a different phone, which is a write-off, um, or figuring something else out, like finding, I don't know, you guys, finding an old iPad on Craigslist or something that takes better pictures, okay? So you're in an attraction marketing business, so you need to have something that's equipped for that. Um, if you can't afford it at first, that's fine, but save your first couple fast starts or whatever so that you can um, get something that's of good quality. Don't reuse those generic self-made or even corporate approved images that have been sh shared hundreds of times. See the collage and I'll show you. Social media recognizes the same photo being used multiple times and it will literally be blocked. So you guys, each photo, just like each post on Facebook or Instagram, even on your stories, has like almost what would be like considered an IP address for your computer. Every single picture has an individual one of those. So for every time that that picture is either put on your story or on your timeline, the algorithm literally does like a tally mark. And after a certain number of times that that's been posted, it blocks even more people from seeing that. So now only 2% of your followers are seeing your posts. That's why unfold is so important. And I'm going to be spending a lot more time making my own stories. Um, it does take a little bit longer, but you're going to see the results because more people are going to be voting because more people are going to be seeing it. Okay. So again, it comes back to being genuine and not just finding a bunch of posts that you find on Pinterest, which are great. And I use Pinterest all the time. You guys like, don't get me wrong, but mix it in. Um, and switch it up. So use, that's why not just posting pictures that you find on Pinterest for your story on, on any story because, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought with her grabbing me. But when you keep using those same pictures, first of all, again, everybody's going to be seeing the same ones over and over and over again. So you want to make sure that you have variety and that you're being um, genuine. So do post a variety of posts. You're sharing your adventure. Post about your family, your food, inspiration, fun, friendships, fashion, decor, products, selfies, etc. 
you must have a variety so that when someone goes to your profile, they can see that it's you and that you're not just engaging with people for a sale. Because you shouldn't be. Build relationships, be genuine in the interest of other people, and it will pay off in the long run. So um, it's, again, fine to use standard pictures or whatever every once in a while. Um, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. But again, incorporate yourself. So for instance, this is my page. Nope. And you can see like right here, this is a picture that Cheyenne Knox posted, but it looks like a Pinterest picture or something. So I took this one, super cute, totally fine, matched my page. But if you can see that all around it is my face. I know it's hard to see with my phone right now. Once I put her down, it'll be easier. Um, but you can see that there's so much of me that that doesn't just look like I'm a fake profile. Um, and then it says, don't post too many push posts. Contact me now or today message me. In a push post, you're requesting something specific of your audience instead of a pull post to draw them in. So there's a pull push in posting. So get real and be honest. Tell your story or someone else's. Let them know what these products are doing for you and how thankful you are for them. Tell people how It Works has changed your life. Explain where you were before the products or the opportunity came into your life, what it's doing for you today, and what it'll continue to do for you in the future. So again, if you don't have your own story right now, she's a lunatic. When you don't have your own story because you just started, use other people's. Like, use other people's. Girl. Why are you being cranky? Are you just tired? Um, anyways, yeah. So be intentional with your posts. Don't always post in the um, body of your posts. Like, text me today or text coffee to, which is fine to do every once in a while, but if you're doing it every single post, people feel like it's in general. Um, and then do go back and clean up your timeline. Go back and delete BOGO or flash sale promotions. They no longer apply to your highlight reel. Go to your Facebook or Instagram profile and delete the photos you may have posted in the week that just don't look good. Um, your profile should be attractive and draw people to it. So I'm gonna show you kind of like do's and don'ts of those. Okay, this is a major don't. This is what I'm talking about, about the cheesy. <laughs> that was like quote so don't post 80 percent like that just looks spammy right here's a do they still have products in their pictures but it's got her face it's got her hand holding the vitamins and you can still work harder, not smarter. That hand could totally not be hers. Same with the greens pick, but she's got two that are her and they look genuine. Can you see the difference? I know you're sleepy. This is also another don't. You see how it's just too busy, it's too much? Not okay, delete it. It doesn't look good. Here's a better example. So it's got cute pictures and it's okay to post stuff with it works in the title or like in the picture, but just don't make it, don't make that the only thing that's in there. The other thing, thing that I've seen a lot of people do recently that you guys need to delete off your page is stuff like this. This is for your story. It's not for your timeline. See how it says swipe up? You look like a dummy. And I don't say that to be mean, I just mean like, you're saying swipe up and they don't even have the option to swipe up. What are they gonna do, comment? At least when they swipe up on your story, it takes them to the messaging and they can just drop an emoji and it's there. Um, here's another example. This is cute for your story. This is not for your page. Just little stuff like that. It just, it makes a difference. Even stuff like this. I'm seeing so many of these on people's pages. 
And if you don't know, this is from that Unfold app that I was talking about. It's specifically to make story posts. So they're super cute. They give a lot of information, um, but it just, again, kind of looks spammy on your page. Like you're just posting to sell somebody that product versus you taking a picture with the toner saying, oh my God, my face was so red before I started using this. Like saving grace every day or something like that. Like, do you see the difference? It's just a just a weird marketing tactic, but that's just kind of the business that we're in. So I'll show you There's something else that I was going to add on to this. So I guess I'll just kind of jump into like revamping your Instagram. So I'm going to go through tonight. Actually, I'm going to send out my messages and catch up on my messages and stuff. Um, and I'm going to go through and delete a bunch of things because I was watching on Melissa Bayou, Bayou training recently. And she was talking about revamping your Insta. So I got a lot of these tips from her. So I'm definitely not going to take all the credit. Um, but, sorry, let me, let's get situated. I'm clear with this. Um, so there's a few things that just statistically I want to talk about. So when you look at my Instagram, you can see a few things right off the bat. First of all, I have a matching highlight. You don't have to have matching highlights necessarily, but they should be like, I mean, the icons or anything, they don't have to be the same, but the color scheme should all be generally the same on your highlights. And if you don't know how to add a highlight or add to your story highlights at all, let alone change the cover, let me know and I can walk you through it. Or you guys need to be like when I was in the beginning, I was super proactive. Like I, before I asked something, always went to YouTube and was like, how do I put up an Instagram story? Or how do I change the cover photo to my Instagram account on my highlights? Or how do I gain more followers? Or whatever it is that you guys are struggling with, I promise there's a video too. And if you don't know how to find those, that's when your upline is huge. Because I promise you that I know every video that's like, oh my God, I have a perfect one for you. Watch this, it's 10 minutes. Or watch this, it's 45 minutes, but it'll give you so much information. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid to ask your upline for things like that because that's what we're here for. If you're like, okay, I really, I want to be signing double the amount of customers that I'm signing right now. How can I do that? And I'll send you a quick video to watch that'll give you tips. But so highlights and your cover should um, should match with the color scheme. The other thing that I found out recently was people are more drawn to your page or more likely to click those or will interact more when it matches with the seasons. And I know that's really weird, um, but because we're in the month of December, people are gonna like to see pictures of like you at the mountain and in the snow or like on your highlights having a snow theme or like mine is a little truck with um a christmas tree or whatever it is just like i change mine seasonally sometimes monthly you know i try not to change it too often so that my page so that my normal followers aren't like what the hell but usually like once every 60 days i'm changing i'm completely revamping everything so i'll change my profile picture I'll edit my, um, my bio, tweak it a little bit. I'll add new cover photo highlights. I'll um, change my color scheme to my whole Instagram. Like I've been doing red and greens recently, just kind of like more earthy tones. Um, so I'll show you kind of like when I switched over. So if you see, first of all, I had it stacked in threes, which I loved for a really long time. Um, but then everyone and their mother started doing it and it bugged me. So I stopped, but you can see that it's generally like my photos kind of match. Like it's just, um, they all kind of just go together. If you can tell what I mean. So it's kind of got that pinky purpley theme and then it starts to change as we get up here, right here. So then it gets to more cool tones, reds and greens, lighter tones, more black and gray. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out was my bio. You see how it's stacked in paragraphs like that? It looks a lot better and people read them more and it's more attractive if they're in like, 
paragraphed lines. What's that called? It's like a, a haiku. Um, when it's in that format, it just looks better. Here, look at this. Grab this. Um, and so I have a few things on here that, one thing that I wanna point out too, if you have It Works in your bio, either on Facebook or on Instagram, remove it. Because people immediately have a, they're gonna immediately think that you are a spammy account without you, you could have the best post and the most beautiful page in the world, but if you have It Works or even Mary Kay or Unique or whatever up there, people are gonna be less likely to follow you because they feel like it's a business account. And even though you use your account for business, um, it's still very personal. And that's why I suggest that you guys don't make dual Instagram or double Facebook accounts. Don't make a group for your business on Facebook. Don't make a separate Instagram for your business because the whole point of this, and like we just learned a little bit ago, is that you want it all to be personal. You want it to be about you taking the pictures and incorporating it as much into your life as possible. And it comes back to your why. Like, I'm doing this because I want to be home with my daughter. So when I take pictures of my kid and I'm like, I can't wait to be home with you every second of every day, that's real life. And people feel that and can relate to that. But if I post a picture of some fake dollar bills and I'm like, hey, you could make $500 by, being at, by posting on social media, like, which would you be more drawn to? You know what I mean? Like, which would you think is more legit? A mom taking a picture with her kid saying, this business is going to allow me to stay home with my kid all day or, and, and again, like there's certain ways to go about it. And I could show you the difference between how you could make a standard picture of money on Pinterest look really good and have a good post with it and still get attraction from it. But there's just, there's two ways to go about it, a spammy way and a non spammy way. So this is going to kick us off here in a second. So I want to kind of speed up because I don't want to have it split in two. So the other thing is following versus followers. So it should be generally the same, or hopefully, like right now I'm following, so my following is a little bit higher than my followers. Um, but eventually I'll bring that back down. So you wanna make sure that your following eventually is either the same or less than your followers, okay? Because you don't wanna be following a ton more people than follow you. People are more likely to follow you if you, like they feel lucky for you following them if you have a thousand followers and you only follow 200, you know what I mean? Versus if I had 5,000 following and 200 followers, people are less likely to follow me. Like why, why aren't people following this chick back? Does that make sense? Um, and then same thing with your posts. That's why going through and filtering it is so important. So like you can see I'm at 1400. So I want that number to be generally in line with my following also. So when those numbers start to match up, there's something in people's brains. It's just, honestly, it's just math and statistics and <laughs> just different polls that people have done that people will be more likely to follow you if all of these numbers are similarly the same. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was your profile picture and your like actual Insta name matching. So you can see that this says Alexa Huffman. So that should always say your name. And then this can be whatever you want it to be, your tag. But I suggest it being something personal or that's clean. Like you don't want party girl 432 as your tag but you could have something else or even if it's funny or whatever, you know, that's fine. But just make sure, cause this is a professional account that you want people to follow you. So, um, let's see, what else was I gonna go over about that? Do you guys have any questions specifically about posting or do's and don'ts or things that you need help with? Like, are you struggling with making posts? We have seven minutes, so you guys can unmute as you have questions and just popcorn. Okay, Tessa, what are you struggling with? with post. It? Well, what does that mean? Like, you're struggling with writing a post, like you don't know what to say, or you're struggling with just actually putting them up? 
just writing them in general. Okay, so I have a few different post videos that I send them to you already. No, I think Let me double check. So that's going to be huge. Um, and I know sometimes, especially starting out, I'm like sending you a bunch of videos and you're like, oh my God, I don't have time to watch these, but I promise that you will benefit from them. Okay, yeah, I did. So, Tessa, have you watched those videos? I think I've watched one of them. I just got so busy. I'm kind okay. of finishing them tonight. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, just try and watch them whenever you can, and that'll, I think that'll help a ton. So, Jocelyn Yates talks about, like, a 3-3 three, three rule. So, three product posts, three um, opportunity posts a day. And, um... I tend to go more along the like four two <laughs> type. So I'll do like four opportunity posts and two product posts, but those are like inter intermixed. Mm -hmm. um, and when I talk about product posts, I, I want it to be again, visually appealing. So like talk about what the product, here, I'll find a good one for you. So let's see. So this is one. I posted this picture, so it's personal, right? It's me and my kid and my coffee. And it basically says, Keto peeps, if you're drinking black coffee or bulletproof coffee, hear me out. I'm seriously so obsessed with our keto coffee, and here's why. One, if you do it, it won't break your it won't break your fast. This is why I drink my keto coffee as my breakfast. It not only keeps me full, blah blah blah. Two, it contains grass fed butter. Like three, whatever, and it goes on and on. Um, or you could do a shorter one that's like, does your coffee do this? And it has a cute picture. Again, see how it's a cute picture? And this is actually a non-corporate approved photo, so I'm going to delete this right now because I didn't catch it. Um, but you could do a corporate approved picture here. But make sure that the first picture is cute. So see how it's like a picture of the coffee? I don't have just the results picture as the first page. That's going to be really important. Um, same thing with like, let's see. And stuff like this is fine because it's cute, but you don't want your whole page to be like this. So this is a super cute post. It talks about the Confianza. It says this is a blend of natural herbs that help you cope with the different types of stress that life throws at you, like a major cold, lots of work to do, blah, blah, blah. Drop an emoji and I'll send you the product info or whatever. Um, so as you can see, even though that picture is there, it's fine and it doesn't look spammy only because of the stuff that I have around it and there's so much of me still in my posts. That, but if my page is filled with that, it definitely would look spammy. So um, if you don't know how to write a post, that's when um, your upline or someone that inspires you in the business is going to be a huge asset because then you can go to their page and like screenshot a bunch of ones that you like and use that as inspiration. So if Jade Hooper posts a picture of her, like there was one that I loved where she was like standing with one kid on her hip and there was shit all everywhere in the background. It looked like a tornado hit her house and her other kids running around and she's pregnant and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't show you the perfect life, but like this is my life and this is why I do this business and blah, blah, blah. And she goes on and tells her story. Um, but it still is personal. So I could take that and post a similar picture of me with my house a mess, you being pregnant or whatever and being like, oh my God, thank goodness for this business because without it, I would be sick in bed still making no money. Whereas with this, I can be sick in bed and relaxing and letting my baby heal while I heal and I'm making money at the same time. You know what I mean? So you could incorporate it with you. Um, but finding that structure is going to be important. So like going to someone's page and seeing how they start their post and how they wrap it up and like what's in between. Um, and that's why <laughs> those videos will help a lot too because they're going to kind of explain that and like, Jocelyn goes over one. Jocelyn goes over how to 
write an opportunity post. So like before it works, now if it works, what it's going to do for you. Um, I hate selfies, but I post a ton of my baby's pictures. No, that's not bad. And you know what, girl? I had people when I first started this business because I felt so disgusting after I had my kid that I never wanted to take selfies. Oh, this is going to kick me off. So if it does, I'm sorry. Um, oh, sorry. But I posted a ton of her and they were like, you're using your kid as propaganda, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, um, dude, I'm using my kid as my pictures because she's my why. And that's important, you know, to know that too is like, she's the reason that I do this every single day. And she's the reason that I share this opportunity. So no, I'm not going to not post pictures of her. But even if you don't like pictures of yourself, take pictures of other things too. So it's not just your kid with your business on your page. So take pictures of you going on a walk outside. Even if you didn't go on a walk outside, pretend you went on a walk outside and go outside and take a cute picture of a tree or like take a picture of you with your mug and say, I'm drinking keto coffee or I'm, I was stuck with regular coffee today and I really wish I had my keto coffee because this is what it does for you. So I hope that that makes sense, but I don't want this to kick me off and not be able to stop recording. So I love you guys and please text me if you have questions.